I was sketching concepts for The Predator. Jim Cameron looked over to me and says, you know, I always wanted to see something with mandibles. And I went, oh, really? Well, so what? So recently it was announced that a new Predator movie is in the works, and I figured what better time to make a video on an issue that's been bugging me with all of the Predator sequels since the original movie. I've touched on this before, but I don't think my point was fleshed out enough. So this video will be going through every Predator sequel and how each film gets the face wrong. Why a moment like this just doesn't have the same visual impact as this. The Predator sequels were always more interested in adding details to the Predator's face, but always skimp out on the actual function underneath the face. There's a clear distinction of what the Predator's face looks like in the original versus every single sequel that followed, not to mention the comic books and video games. For the longest time I was never able to put my finger on it, but after re-watching the original one day it instantly hit me. The mouth. Whether it's due to the limitations of the animatronics, or it was always Stan Winston's intent, there's a biological function to the Predator's mandibles outside of just being sharp tusks. As you can see, the predator's mouth has no lips to cover the teeth or gums. So how do they prevent their mouth from drying? I mean, they have eyelids stopping their eyeballs from drying, and they aren't like the alien that has an endless supply of drool. It's actually a big function of the mandibles. In the first movie, when the predator reveals its face for the first time, the orientation of the mandibles looks like this X formation, and it nearly covers its entire mouth and it's only until it roars do we see it all open up. With the way that the mandibles close up, it shields the mouth. It's always reminded me of a crab's mouth, where it can all close up, but then it can all open up to allow food in. Not only the function of closing up its mouth, this is the only movie to demonstrate the top two tusks are for his clicking and communication. Not only do the sequels never show the mouth fully closed up, they have never shown the clicking ever again. In fact, there's this issue with the first entry in these classic franchises showing the most of the specific character or creature, and all the sequels just speed up or cheapen the effect. Like the entire showdown of the first Terminator. You get to actually see the robot walking around and it's like you're living with it. All sequels onwards, it's just the cheapest and shortest element of that movie, except for Salvation. The portrayal of the Predator in the original movie always felt like a personal fight between it and Arnold's character. Character. It's a fully flushed out character by that point. All the sequels following the first movie just feels like an action monster. The design of this Predator is really wonderful and uh, the concept of the character and hunting and hunting down Arnold is fun. But on top of all of that, there's creating a personality that the audience can relate to, you know, because without it, then it's just something from somewhere else. The original movie is the most the Predator feels like a proper character. All sequels onwards, it always feels like a pop cultural representation of a character. And just to show you what I mean, I'll be breaking down how the Predator's face has always looked wrong in the following films. Predator 2 started to stray, but it still maintains the closed mandible look. Where it differs is the cheek skin doesn't close up as much. Here's my little Photoshop fix to make it have the same function as the original Predator's mouth. And I'll be doing this for each of the following movies that feature the Predator. Starting with Alien vs Predator. This is the first example of the filmmakers losing the biological point of the face. Given my diagram of how they are meant to close to cover the mouth, this has now been changed to how much the mandibles can open up. This is how much the mouth opens up in the original and the second movie. This is how much wider it can open now. But this is where the Predator face animatronics are now revealed to be heading in the wrong direction. The original face was molded with the mouth in a closed arrangement. So when it opens, it all stretches naturally. Here the mandibles and cheeks have been molded to be open and screaming. So when they close, all the cheek skin buckles. Now it looks exactly like what it is, a rubber animatronic face. In the original, when the mandibles close, everything all retains the right shape. The face also now has this weird redesign where the chin kind of extends down like an overbite, but what makes it stand out even more is the bottom mandible tusks now hang down lower and tuck into the side. This is clearly a full redesign just for this movie, which you can see with the Elder Predator. It shares the same mold with the extended chin and the mandibles to the side, which is what they did with the Elder Predator from Predator 2. It's the same mold from the first movie, just done up to be old, but you can still see how that Elder Predator has a closed mouth like the original, and it doesn't move too crazy. And here's my fix. A lot of the AVP mold 
world can still work when implying that these are teenage predators. Dropping the angry eyes can still help imply youth, but it still needed the eyes shrunken down. These are borderline Disney eyes. And the other issue is now with the prolonged chin, there is way more for the mandibles to cover. So I brought it back up. I removed the buckling of the cheek skin and raised the top tusks higher. And I think this shares a better continuity with the original Predator. So my weird opinion of AVP Requiem is that I like the violence and I really like the portrayal of the Predator. Gets the Predator back on track of being tall and slim and also the Predator medical kit. Never make a Predator movie without the medical kit and him patching himself up. This is what stops him from being a stupid monster that somehow has magical space technology. That being said, the Predator face just kind of looks too superficial. First of all, it's lit way too dark and you only see it for like a few seconds. The rest is shaky cam and is buried in so much shadow that there's barely any detail to make out. For this quick shot you can sort of see that the mandibles hug around the mouth, but eh, still not quite. And so I couldn't actually fix this one. Usually I'm the disgusting AVP2 apologist for how it's the best portrayal of the Predator since Predator 2, but when it comes to the face, it just doesn't really look like anything. But that's fine, AVP2 can't be fixed anyway. Hey, I've got a great premise for an Alien vs Predator sequel, we'll just steal the plot to Gremlins. Now, I know Predators is probably one of the more praised of the Predator sequels. I like a lot of what it was trying to do, but at the end of the day, it's just way too fan filmy for me, which out of that lends to a more frustrating portrayal of the classic Predator. They tried their hardest to recreate the original design, not working off of homage or reference like an AVP. They wanted this to literally look like the original, and it does, but once again, they didn't understand the point of the mandibles. Also featuring AVP's problem of the mouth being molded to be open and screaming. But in this instance, the buckling is horrific, making it look like a stretched out anus when it's closed. Also, the mandibles sag down so much, which gives the mouth like no life. Also, the predator has a broken jaw apparently, because the mouth is just fixed open. It never opens or closes. It just stays open like a Halloween mask. Every other aspect about the predator's costume is spot on identical to the original, but the mouth is just so wrong. And they like sort of make the mandibles move just so it doesn't look completely lifeless, but ugh. Really feels like they cheaped out on the animatronic. And this is my fix. This was probably the easiest Photoshop job to make match the original Predator, seeing as it's near identical. By tightening the cheeks and bringing the mandibles up and closed around the mouth, nearly mirror the classic Predator perfectly. Which is such a shame because the movie could have been such a complimentary piece to the original. But just like the sequels, they keep adding in unnecessary elements to the lore. Such as the Alpha Predators. <laughs> Could have been a better flushed out concept, but I hate the execution. Don't get me wrong, sick predator helmets, but the faces just look terrible. Going off of the movie's logic, they are meant to be a bigger and tougher predator species, but they cast normal sized stuntmen, but make the head much, much bigger. And before the predator was mostly humanoid looking, these look like spider reptiles. My fix is, eh, what can you do? Tried to add back in the cheek skin. The mandibles were more spider legs anyway. Also, this design just sucks. These are meant to be dogs and wolves. The classic predator mostly looks like a roast chicken, but the alpha predators look like a prey mantis burn victim. Should have just made it all a group of classic predators. Maybe ones that went rogue. That's what would have saved that movie. But don't worry, the worst predator movie is yet to come. So, everything is wrong with this predator's face. The mandibles hang so far down from the face. The bottom mandibles have always sort of hung off of the jaw. Here they're like sprouting out of its neck, and the cheeks have been molded to be in this over the top screaming pose, which in turn is stretched too much. So when the mouth closes, the cheek skin buckles so much to the point where it looks like creased paper. Like there are folds behind folds. It looks so bad. Also the eyes are like cheap Halloween makeup yellow. This is probably the worst the predator face has ever looked. And like the previous installment, the head is way too big compared to the body. Like they have filled it with servos and animatronics, but it still ends up looking like buckled folded shit. Even the pussy throat just looks strange when the mouth opens. Like it's a puppet from the 70s, and that's an insult to the 70s. Like just look at it. And I better not see any comments trying to chalk this up to, um, excuse me, in the film they say the predator has human DNA, hence why it has differences. Nah, terrible and cheap predator head. As for my fix, Although the forehead is way too long and flat, 
Just bringing up the mandibles and tightening the skin instantly makes it better. Even stops it from looking so cheap. Eh, I really don't like this movie's predator head, but that ain't the only one. There's a super predator. The super predator still loses the point of the mandibles, but since it's CGI, the skin doesn't buckle or fold. It's hard to look like a cheap animatronic when it's a cheap looking visual effect. And uh, I don't like this predator either. I don't like that its skin can form armor, and I don't like that it's on the planet hunting autism. As my fix, uh, it's basically all same same. Mandibles still sag down, brought them up, and that's about it. It looks terrible anyway. Better than the alpha predators, but I still hate it and wish they didn't add this There's another predator race that's bigger crap. Bigger doesn't mean a better hunter. The Predator has never felt like the character it was since the original. It always felt like he was this petty dick from another planet hunting for sport. Shit happens. I always thought that the Predator could either be from some ancient tribe of intergalactic warriors, or it could have just been some rich dentist on his planet, and it hunts primitive races with its unfair technology and weapons. I always felt like there was a presence there. All of the sequels pushed the Predator more into the monster direction. Like, why would it roar at her for no reason? Why not just bring back the clicking? Or maybe some new vocalization to indicate that this character is not a threat. The sounds that they make in Predators just flat out makes no sense. Why add that? It never sounded like some weird robot monster before. I know making a video about the mandibles being wrong probably sounds like a nitpick, but this is the thing. Why is it that the Predator was the most distinct in the original compared to all of the others? When I can put this much thought into just the function of its mouth, why can't the sequels? The Predator never talks anymore and it never uses mandibles to indicate speech. What the hell are you? <laughs> Now it's just like an open mouth and the mandibles just move because. And I guess this carries over to my point of this new Predator 5 movie that's in the works. Two sequels and two crossovers of the character just feel like a pop cultural movie monster rather than the personality in the original. I just want some return to form. Most people think that when you prepare for a role for this, it's mostly just physical. It's mostly just jogging and push-ups and movement. But there was also a lot of thought into what kind of uh, planet he came from. You work on uh, the inner things that are going in, on in the character just like as you would in any character in the suit or out of the suit and then it just feels like each sequel is a special effect playing dress up but what do you all think do you see the predator differently now is it as ruined for you as it is for me drop a comment also if you like this video and you want to see more in-depth analysis like it consider supporting the channel on patreon never miss an update always see what's coming next or what's in the pipeline and also help me beat the youtube algorithm by dropping a like comment share and hit the notification bell cheers for watching